This is a diagram of a general water system in an RV. This is one of the winterizing processes that can be done by pumping antifreeze through the water system. It's important to drain the fresh black and gray tanks first before adding antifreeze to the fresh water system. In this first picture, when draining the water system, there are low point drains located under the trailer. They will have caps or valves to open them. In this picture, all the way to the right is the fresh water tank's drain. It's crucial to open this to allow the fresh water tank to drain. In this picture is another example of a fresh water tank drain. All drains will either have caps or knobs to open and close them. A suburban hot water tank is made of steel. These will have an anode rod that is located on the outside of the unit behind the access door. This here is a picture of a hot water panel on the outside of the unit. An anode rod can be pulled before tanks are drained or after. Most anode rods can be removed with a 1 and 1 16th socket. Here's a good picture of a new anode rod versus a worn out anode rod. Atwood water heater drain plugs are plastic and are either 7 8 or 15 16 size sockets. When removing the socket, it's important not to damage the LP line or gas valve. Atwood water heaters have a lined aluminum tank that is made out of glass, blue in color. If you see this during winterizing, you need to consult with your local RV dealer. Since the tank is lined, there is no need for an anode rod. These are two different types of water heater bypass valves. Bypass valves, if so equipped, are located on the back side of the hot water heater, usually located on the interior of the RV behind an access panel. Water heaters with a bypass for winterizing will contain a triple valve or single valve with a check valve at the top of the tank. With the triple valve, you will need to close the hot and cold water valves, leaving the middle valve open to allow antifreeze to flow through the hot water lines and out the faucets. With a single valve heater, you will want to close the valve so the antifreeze will not flow into the water heater. A good indication that this has been accomplished correctly, there will be no antifreeze coming out of the drain on the exterior. When winterizing the water system, it's important to bypass or remove the fresh water filter from the water system. In figure 4 is a strainer that is located on the water pump not usually required to remove during winterization. Figure 3 is a reverse osmosis water system that may require a dealer to winterize. Figures 1 and 2 are cartridge style filters that can be removed and or bypassed. If these filters are not removed, they need to be replaced in the spring. When the fresh water tank is emptied, you will turn the lever to shut off access to the fresh water tank. This will now be open only to the suction hose for the fresh water antifreeze, provided in most RVs. Before pumping antifreeze through the water system, some people prefer to use air to blow out as much water out of the system as possible. This can be accomplished by using an air compressor and hooking up to the city water connection as seen in figure 1. During this process, you would want to use a pressure regulator, figure 2, and a Schrader valve attachment, figure 3. Most water lines in today's RVs are PEX tubing, which is rated at 45 PSI max. That's why it's important to use the regulator. This is a blowout air adapter. This will be hooked up to the brass pressure reducer. Here's a picture of the brass pressure reducer. This will be screwed into the water fill. Here's the city water fill. This water fill will be located on the side of your unit. This is another type of city water fill. City water fill is on the right and fresh water fill is on the left. And this is what your fresh water pump will look like. 